I'm Lindsay Jane, and welcome to the solar punk scene. One of the most well-known aspects of solar punk are the images of glass and garden-filled buildings that merge human civilization and nature into one. But what would that look like in real life? I'll be doing a guide on solar punk architecture in general in the future, but today we're going to be exploring five real solar punk buildings. Solar punk architecture is defined by being sustainable, biophilic designed buildings that try to be good to both people and planet. While these may not look exactly like imagery you've seen online, these unique places will blow your mind. Number 5. Greater World Earthship Community, New Mexico Built from earth and old tires, Mike Reynolds' Earthships are radical experiments in sustainable architecture that propose alternative systems for building, living in, and owning a house in our industrial society. The first community of Earthships was developed by him in New Mexico in the 1970s, and that has inspired a building method that is used by a growing number of people globally. Dug into a south-facing slope or berm, Earthships are typically assembled from U-shaped modules with maximum dimensions of 18 feet wide by 26 feet deep. These can be configured into variously straight, staggered, and stepped plans, depending on the site and program. The walls are constructed from automobile tires packed with earth, which gives them a standard thickness of 2 feet 4 inches. Non-load-bearing infill and partition walls are made from aluminum cans or glass bottles set in cement mortar. The walls are finished with 2 inches of plaster and roofed with such locally available materials as pine, steel, or concrete for beams, plywood trusses, or wood joists. Operable skylights provide both interior illumination and ventilation. The roof slopes backwards towards the berm and has drainage canals that collect and channel rainwater to catchment basins and cisterns at each end of the earthship. A greenhouse with sloped double-plane glazing runs across the south side of the modules. Earthships are fabricated from trash rather than new materials or even recycled materials that have been reprocessed for construction. Trash breaks the wasteful cycle of energy consumption by reusing materials as they are found, thus saving the embodied energy that would have otherwise be discarded. The structures operate off the grid from centralized utilities as much as possible. The thermal mass of its berm and tire construction and its southern orientation work together as a daily battery that stores and releases heat without relying on electricity or gas. Limiting the energy load, Earthships function as their own power plant by deploying photovoltaic panels or windmills to generate and batteries to store electricity. Earthships also have a water plant with a distillation system to purify the rainwater collected on the roof. Complementing the system, Earthships have a sewage plant that segregates black from grey water, sending waste to the septic tank while directing grey water to the greenhouse. Earthships aim to allow someone to grow their own food, produce their own energy, provide clean water and shelter, and have better garbage management and sewage treatments. This was just a short clip into the wonderful world of Earthships, so if you would like to learn more, check the description below for a full link to a video tour along with articles with more information. Number 4. The Bill Fish Forest Stewardship and Education Center the Bill Fish Forest Stewardship and Education Centre is the first project in Canada to be recognized by the International Living Future Institute ILFI, as Living Building Challenge Certified. Build is the most rigorous sustainability standard in the world. Designed by Dialogue for the Regional Municipality of York, the centre is LEED Platinum and ILFI Certified. The Living Building Challenge, LBC, is a building certification program, advocacy tool, and philosophy that defines the most advanced measure of sustainability in the built environment possible today. The world's most rigorous standard for green buildings, a living building, is free of toxic chemicals and runs on net zero energy, generating the same amount of and sometimes more energy than it requires to operate. Designed to be easily disassembled and recycled after its projected 90-year life cycle, the exterior wood-paneled facade was salvaged and repurposed Douglas fir from the demolished Cascades factory on Commissioner Street in Toronto. 
The structure was built primarily of cross-laminated timber and glued laminated timber, and Forest Stewardship Council certified to ensure materials were tracked and verified to come from ecologically sustainable sources. Sun path orientation was the driving force behind the building's positioning to prevent overheating and provide shade in the summer months while naturally warming and illuminating the interior during winter months. A living building demonstrates excellence in seven performance areas over a 12-month period of continuous occupancy. Areas include place, restoring a healthy interrelationship with nature, water, creating developments that operate within the water balance of a given place and climate, energy, relying only on current solar income, health and happiness, creating environments that optimize physical and psychological health and well-being, materials, endorsing products that are safe for all species through time, equity, supporting a just and equitable world, and beauty, celebrating design that uplifts the human spirit. The Bill Fish Stewardship and Education Center is Canada's first living building and one of only 21 buildings worldwide with complete certification. To find out more about living buildings, check the links in the description below. Number 3. University of Warsaw Library The University of Warsaw Library was founded in 1816 as a direct consequence of establishing the Royal Warsaw University. The library initially housed mostly theological and historical books, though the collection was however enlarged by papers from other scientific fields. During World War II, part of the most precious collections was damaged by fire. Thanks to the dedicated librarians, some of the library's resources survived the war after being walled in in the basement. During the 1980s, the library was one of the most prominent centers of free thought and activism. The current library building was opened on 15th December 1999. The distinct new building includes a botanical garden located on the roof. The garden designed by landscape architect Irina Barzyska is one of the largest roof gardens in Europe. In 2002, the garden was opened on the University of Warsaw library roof measuring over one hectare in surface. It is one of the largest roof gardens in Europe and is accessible through a so-called entry garden namely a gently sloped surface with planted vegetation. The roof garden is divided into two parts, the upper and lower part, which are joined by a cascading stream. The lower part includes, amongst others, a fish pond, where ducks have taken residence, as well as a series of granite sculptures by Rizard Strajecki on cosmological themes. The upper garden comprises of four parts, golden to the north, silver to the east, crimson to the south, and green to the west. Each one features different vegetation whose colors reflect their names. Individual sections of the garden are connected by paths, bridges, and pergolas. The rooftop is also an ideal viewing point of Warsaw's panorama, as well as the library interiors. The upper garden is open to the public from April to October. The lower garden is open all year round. Number two, Pasona Urban Farm. Tomato vines suspended over conference tables and broccoli fields in the reception are part of working life at this Japan office by Kono Designs. Kono Designs created the urban farm in 2010 in a nine-story office building in Tokyo to allow employees to grow and harvest their own food at work. The creation of the new headquarters for Japanese recruitment firm Pasona consisted of refurbishing a 50-year-old building to include office areas, an auditorium, cafeterias, a rooftop garden, and urban farming facilities. Inside the 19,974 square meter office building, there are 3,995 square meters dedicated to screen space that house over 200 species of plants, fruits, vegetables, and rice. All of the food is harvested, prepared, and served on-site in the cafeterias, making Pasona's urban farm the largest farm-to-table office scheme in Japan. Employees are encouraged to maintain and harvest the crops and are supported by a team of agricultural specialists. Pasona has a larger vision to help create new farmers in urban areas of Japan and a renewed interest in that lifestyle. One way to encourage this is to not just tell urban communities about farms and plants, but to actively engage with them through both a visual intervention in their busy lifestyle 
and educational programs focusing on farming methods and practices that are common in Japan. The building facade features seasonal flowers and orange trees planted within the three feet deep balconies. Partially relying on natural exterior climate, these plants create a lush living green wall and offer a view of the building's dynamic identity to the public. This was a significant loss to the net rentability area for a commercial office. However, Pasono believed in the benefits of urban farm and green space to engage the public and to provide better workspace for their employees. The balconies also help shade and insulate the interiors while providing fresh air with operable windows, a practical feature that, though rare for a mid-rise commercial building, helps reduce its heating and cooling loads during moderate climate. The design focus was not on the imposed standards of green where energy offsets and strict efficiency rates rule, but rather on an idea of a green building that can change the way people think about their daily lives and even their own personal career choice and life path. Ducts, pipes, and vertical shafts were rerouted to the perimeter of the building to allow for maximum height ceilings, and a climate control system is used to monitor humidity, temperature, and airflow in the building to ensure it is safe for employees and suitable for the farm. Kono Designs stated that, it is important not just to think about how we can use our natural resources better from a distance, but to actively engage with nature and create new groups of people who have a deep interest and respect for the world they live in. It is important to note that this is not a passive building with plants on the walls. This is an actively growing building with plantings used for educational workshops where Persona employees and outside community members can come in and learn farming practices. To find out more about the Pasona Urban Farm, check the link in the description below to find out how they keep the building energy efficient and see a full tour of the facilities. Number 1. 25 Verde This is a special building because it is alive. It grows up, it breathes, and it changes as 150 trees with tall trunks cover its terraces. Together with 50 trees planted in the court garden, they produce oxygen, cut down air pollution, protect residents from noise, follow the natural cycle of the seasons, grow day after day, and create a perfect microclimate inside the building, thereby diminishing the rise and fall in temperature in summertime and wintertime. The apartment building, known as 25 Verde, based in Turin, Italy, is a structure made of steel that looks like a forest where trees are rooted in terraces with irregular shapes, ponds are crossed by footings, and lush gardens cover the roofs. The building has been thought of as a living forest. Completed in 2012 and designed by architect Luciano Pio, the aim of the project is both the construction of the block perimeter with a continuous facade and making of a filter between the internal inhabited space and the streets. The project looks to create a flowing and smooth transition space between the passage from the outside to the inside. The smooth and changeable transition is emphasized by a targeted use of green space and natural building materials to create a structure that is compact and distinct, but also transparent, mutable, and enjoyable. One of the aims of the project is to increase the energy efficiency of the building, and for this reason, several integrated solutions have been adopted. Continuous insulation, sun protection, heating and cooling systems which make use of the geothermal energy with heat pumps, and recycling of the falling of rainwater to water the green spaces. There are 63 residential units in the building, and they are all different and fitted with wide terraces of unique shapes that surround the trees. The last floor is covered with private green roofs. The apartments, arranged into blocks and articulated in places by curved corners as if they were treetop lookouts, sit nestled in an outer skin of steel through which trees defiantly climb or leisurely dangle. It is in every sense the antithesis of the ordered concrete and brick blocks it faces out onto. The strips in solid wood that floor the terraces filter the sunlight in summer, while in winter they allow the light to flow into the rooms. The wainscot and larch shingles is a sort of soft and vibrant surface. 
The metal structures are designed to look like trees and they grow from the ground floor to the roof while holding up the wooden planking of the terraces. They become entwined with the vegetation to form a unique facade. To watch a full tour of the apartment building, check out the video in the description below. It's one of my personal favorite buildings out there and it's fascinating to see. Thank you for tuning in again and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments below which was the building that you liked the most and which video you'd like to see me do in the future. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope that you have a great day.